Hello, my name is Allison Warner and I'm the Chief Editor of Orthodontic Products. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of In the Sterilization Room with Jackie, where we talk to infection prevention expert Jackie Dorst about what you need to know to keep the orthodontic team and patients safe during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. For over 30 years, Jackie has been a consultant specializing in instrument sterilization and infection control and prevention in the dental setting. She has degrees in microbiology and dental hygiene and has been a featured speaker at the American Dental Association and the American Association of Orthodontists. Hi, Jackie. Good to see you. Hi, Allison. Here we are for another In the Sterilization Room with Jackie episode uh, <laughs> today. And, you know, we've over all of the episodes that we've been doing, we've discussed so many different topics. And then some topics we come back to and revisit as more information comes out. Yeah, exactly. And so we're kind of in that situation again. So last week, Dr. Fauci announced that two masks were better than one. Uh, and then on February 10th, the CDC published its own research in the MMWR or Morbidity, Mortality and Week Weekly Report related to mass fit. And so Jackie, I wanted to talk about what does this mean for the orthodontic team, this latest research? Well, I, I know a lot of people listen to that and they threw up their hands and go, one mask and now they want us to wear two masks right. what, what's behind that you know what, what's the reasoning for it mm -hmm. and uh i it, as i read the publication from cdc that provided they actually the cdc actually conduct, conducted a research project so we have data uh evaluations of the different masks and mm -hmm. when they 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 had dummies um, that had uh, that were pliable, flex flexible, so that you had you know almost like skin type with the dummies, and they used sodium chloride or a, a saline type aerosol, and they had two dummies, a source dummy and a receptor dummy. So mm -hmm. as if you had two people with it, okay. and uh, they the, as the the dummies would cough. <coughs> or they would have expelled, they even measured how many liters per minute uh, would be expelled. So it, it was a, a control study, if you will. Mm -hmm. And when adding a mask, just adding a mask to it with a medical mask provided 56% reduction in the aerosols and okay. the protection for the receiver. So imagine okay. you've got the, the unmasked person talking and the receiver's mm -hmm. wearing a mask, then they get a 56% protection with a medical mask. Okay. Hmm. We thought it gave us greater protection than that. Right. You know, really, yeah. you go, hmm. And then with a cloth protection mask, it was 51%. Now, what mm -hmm. I found interesting was that CDC didn't mention whether it was a level one, two, or three procedure mask or medical okay. mask, or whether it was uh, what type of cloth it was, whether okay. it was cotton or polyester or whether it was nylon. But mm -hmm. now when they doubled up the mask and had a medical procedure mask and then put a cotton mask over the top of it, mm -hmm. the filtration and the protection increased to 85%. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a huge increase with it. Mm -hmm. Now, they also looked at other ways of modifying the mask to say, get a better fit mm -hmm. for procedure mask. And when mm -hmm. they knotted the mask and then tucked in the excess fabric or pleats yeah. on that mask with it and put it around the ear, it increased the protection 77%. So slightly mm -hmm. less than when they doubled the mask with it. Okay. Now, the, if the title of the publication is actually maximizing the fit for cloth and medical procedure mask to improve performance and reduce the SARS-CoV-2 transmission and exposure. Okay. So they were not looking, they were looking at how can you improve filtration with a mask on it. Mm -hmm. And what it came down to on this study was it's all about the seal. Right. that you get around. Now, normally when you're wearing a procedure mask, mm -hmm. there are gaps on the yeah. side where right. it comes out and then gaps around the chin. And there's even a gap over the nose. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard someone say, oh, I put on my safety glasses or I have my mask on and I put on my sunglasses even yeah. and <laughs> they fog up. Well, yeah. that's because of the moisture that's escaping around the nose. Mm -hmm. So it's well known that the air escapes out around the edge of this flat mask that we try to adapt to our face. If right. you put the mask on and you blow out, 
that you can feel all of this air. Right. So what CDC study did was how can we increase the seal that's around the mask? And they actually published photos. I think you can right. bring those up now yeah. uh, of the different studies. So uh, you can see in photo A that mm -hmm. there's a big gap along the side as we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And then in photo B was where they put a cloth mask over the top of it. And when they put that cloth mask over, you can see in the photo how it more closely adapted to the face and prevented those gaps around the side. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the third photo, photo C, shows the technique for knotting and tucking in so that you pull it back. So okay. those are methods of improving the seal. Mm -hmm. However, in with us with procedural mask for the orthodontic team, I think what they need to look at is how they actually put on their mask okay. because they can improve that mask in their office. This, the one that I'm holding up is mm -hmm. a, a secure fit mask and it was introduced in 2009. So it's been around for over 11 years okay. and it's all, it's since the introduction of it by Crosstex, it's mm -hmm. been one of my favorite masks. Okay. Now, the reason is not only does it have the metal strip across the top of it mm -hmm. that helps you to seal around the nose, it has a metal strip at the bottom. Okay. And that's going to allow me to pinch that metal strip at the bottom and snug it down around the edge. So I'm going to try to talk and don the mask <laughs> at the same time. Hopefully right. we, don't, we don't lose the audio with it. <laughs> but uh, a couple of, uh, of recommendations for your mask is, first of all, Put it on correctly with mm -hmm. the outside, the pleats going down. Right. Okay. The inside of the mask, do you see how the pleats go up? Yes. Okay. That's always going to be the white side of the mask if you have a dyed mask. Okay. The dye is going to be on the outside of the mask, the pleats going down, and of course, the metal strip for the nose is at the top. And okay. this is going to give you the best... Um, uh, adaptation to your face. And when you put it with the, the white undyed side on the inside, you're not exposing your face to any chemicals from the dyes. Um, and I know this, this particular uh, secure fit mask is a sensitive mask. It doesn't have any of the uh, chemicals in the adhesive that hold the different layers together that could cause an allergic reaction with it. Oh, okay. So before okay. I don the mask, I'm even going to do a couple of things that are going to make it fit better. I'm going to put my thumb in, and do you see how I got a curve? Mm -hmm. Rather than pinching it, that will fit over my nose. And then before I don it, I'm going to pull it apart. So now I've got that pocket for my mouth. And okay. then as I put it over my nose, mm -hmm. then I've got the curve. I'm going to push in around my nose to get that seal with it, then come around with the loops on the ears. And now you can see the gaps. Right. Yeah. That's where the air can get in. And that's where I get that 50% risk of okay. just wearing a procedure mask. Okay. How can I adapt it? Well, with the secure fit, I can pull down at the bottom and pinch. And then do you see how much more it snugs in mm -hmm. on the side? Right. Yeah. So I get a closer fit. I don't get those big gaps. And now you can see that pinch. So if I blow out, my air is having to go through the filtration membrane of the mask and not around the edges of okay. it. Okay. So that's part of, of what the study was. Now imagine if this wasn't a secure fit mask mm -hmm. and then I had all these loose gaps. Right. Well, CDC saying if I put a cloth mask over this, then that cloth mask is going to help press mm -hmm. in all the way around the edges. Okay. Or if I take the mask and I knot it and then I put it over my ears, not just cross oh. it, but actually tie a knot and then oh, okay. so not just cross. Again. Yeah. It's not okay. don't cross because right. if you cross, you can actually increase the gap. Look at that. Ah, okay. Okay. So, and a lot of people do that because it keeps yeah, the mask underneath their eyes. Do you see how mm -hmm. this one wants to creep up underneath mm -hmm. my eyes and it gets in your way? So a lot yeah. of people think, oh yeah, I'll just cross this over. Right. But again, that just puts you at greater risk because yeah. you've got more aerosols that can right. get in around the edge of that mask. Yeah. And then I think on top of it, so we've, we've talked about putting it on and you want to remove it without touching the exterior mm -hmm. of the mask, obviously, so that the wearer doesn't recontaminate themselves. And if you can look, there are different size masks. It is not a one mask mm -hmm. fits all. I yeah. found this petite mask, again, available from Crosstex, and look at the different size. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't, yeah. It's quite a bit smaller yeah. for those people that have small slender faces because some of them, they'll put the mask on it and it looks like it's just floating yeah, all exactly. over their face and they're mm -hmm. not getting that good seal. Yeah. So when CDC did the studies, you can see how that increased the protection for the wearer with wearing the mask on it. And and that basically, this is a public health study. So mm. we've all seen the social media postings of the way people wear masks that they're under their nose, or right. it's just giving protection for their chin, or yeah. you know, you go, what are they thinking? Uh, so it's it's not really as important what the level of the mask is, whether it's a right. level two or a level three. It provides mm. the same filtration, uh, of 98% filtration of 0.3 micron size particles. Mm. It's more how, secu how securely does it seal around your face about getting the best seal. And even in the CDC poster that they put up to identify what was the additional protection on it, they actually uh, demonstrated or have a picture on there of what is referred to as a mask fitter. Okay. So when you take that procedure mask, the mask fitter is like a, a plastic frame that mm -hmm. fits over the mask and it helps it snug down again yeah. to give you that uh -huh. seal around it. Or they even looked at one of those gator masks that really don't provide that much protection because right. they're so stretchy and so yeah. porous with it. Yeah. But pulling it up over the, the procedure mask, you can see how it would, again, provide a little bit, a bit greater seal. So it's okay. all about that seal for the mask um, okay. that is providing the protection. And now we have data. We have a, a research project to ver validate it. So that's one of the reasons Dr. Fauci said two masks can be better than one. Okay. And um, that the science is there to support that. Okay. Okay. But if uh, an orthodontic team member does just want to wear the one, if they can just at least do the knot, they're getting that better seal. Yes. To do the knot or to don't, or to have one that and, and CDC right. says other that has the, the metal band, there are a number of manufacturers that have put it in, that you can secure it uh, at yeah. the bottom mm -hmm. and get the size that fits you, then right. all of those are considerations. And you know, most orthodontic assistants at this time are wearing that full face shield too. Right, exactly. And the study didn't include, you know, what, what added protection do we get from the full face shield mm -hmm. uh, okay. with it? So again, it's face shields are open at the around the edges. And right. if you're wearing one at the top, it's open at the bottom. If you're wearing the neck kind, it's open at the top. So yeah. there's still a risk of some aerosol transmission, but uh, mm -hmm. it does provide an additional level of protection. Okay, okay. Well, we're talking here about procedure masks, but the CDC data also applies to N95 masks, correct? I mean, it's really about the principle of, you know, mask fit and maximum protection. You're right. Um, they didn't study the N95 mask, but it gets right down to that N95 has got to seal. It's right. got to fit close around the face. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, as I'm in medical facilities and in dental and orthodontic practices, we're paying money. These N95 respirators are expensive and I see them put on and they're big gaps around the side and even uh, the chin at the bottom, yeah. huge gap there. Well, mm -hmm. you might as well be wearing a good fitting procedure mask. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna give you that, if you put it on right, that 80 right. to 90% filtration because the yeah. particle size is the same and it's only 1% greater filtration. And if it doesn't fit right, you're not even getting that added bonus with yeah. it. Okay. And again, the, 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 sometimes we get lax, we get in a hurry, is I see that um, the clinicians will put on an N95 respirator and not do the seal check. That seal okay. check is where you put on the, the N95 respirator and push it around, and then mm -hmm. you blow out to see if air escapes around the edges of it, and then inhale, to see if the mask slightly, the respirator slightly collapses because it is sealed so that all breath is going through the filtration membrane and not escaping around the edge of it. And then we have to emphasize uh, to the offices as a reminder, please do your fit test. You have to do a fit test for the N95 respirator that you are wearing for protection. And if that fit test fails for that N95 respirator, then try a different brand or another size of it so that yeah. you can get that complete seal around the face. 
an additional reminder is that if you have heavy facial hair for the men, mm -hmm. uh, that heavy facial hair will interfere. You won't get that complete seal. So CDC's even published a poster on what are acceptable facial hairstyles. <laughs> Uh, to wear with uh, an N95 respirator okay. mask. Okay. So it's not, uh, as we said at the very beginning, a one size fits all, uh, one size provides all protection. It's yeah. about the technique of applying it uh, to doing that complete uh, seal to get the best adaptation that you can for your face. So as we continue through this pandemic, we're learning more and more about how to protect ourselves against the SARS-CoV-2 aerosol uh, transmitted virus and other respiratory diseases. Uh, yeah. So I think we'll see this ongoing into the future um, with more information and greater protection for us. Yeah. Well, and I think it's definitely a reminder that if you're going to spend the money on N95 masks or even procedural masks, make sure you're getting the most for your money by actually using it correctly. So yes, yes. That. Well, Jackie, thank you so much. Um, I think this information is very timely and very useful uh, for our audience, so thank you. We will be back next week with the next episode of In the Sterilization Room with Jackie. In the meantime, to catch up on the latest uh, orthodontic information or on past episodes, please visit our website, orthodontoproductsonline.com. Until next time, take care and stay safe.